Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Now, there's been talks about a third force ahead of the 2023 um, general elections in Nigeria. And if there will be a political party or groups of political parties strong enough to provide a veritable opposition to the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party. We're now being joined by the former Special Advisor to River State to discuss this. He is Mr. Punabo in Kotaria. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So I want us to first Thank talk you. about the People's Democratic Party and its role as an opposition. And um, firstly, would you agree with people who say that the People's Democratic Party has failed in its role as an opposition party? Well, to a very large extent, yes. Um, because the opposition is not as viral as we expect it to be when just opposed with that of the APC preceding the 2015 election. So to that very extent, I'll tell you, yes, PDP has to a very large extent been docile. And uh, the PGD is obligation as the major opposition party in the country. I agree with them, but I disagree with a whole lot of other things. So, which other things do you disagree with? The infighting in the PDP, the schism so far in the PDP. Uh, to me, I would describe it as uh, maximizing the minimum and minimum, minimizing the maximum. In other words, the PDP members should realize that what they are doing could be akin to a macabre dance at the theater of megalomania with a crazy spin of recklessness. It is completely inane, completely unnecessary. That's why when you take on the advisements, the issues surrounding the skills, the crisis in the peak in the party. To me, it's just um, the issue of drum major instinct at play. The drum major instinct. That is what is at play. Echo battle. Because the secondos um, led a um, national working committee or led party, tenure, will expire in a month, two or three. And so I expect when you consider what your target is, that's why I said minimizing the maximum and maximizing the minimum. When you consider what your target is, which is to rest power from the APC that has performed that this money, I think that should have been your focus. And you should not at all drag and get the party a mess in crisis that will also uh, threaten the success of the party come 2023. So in other words, they are, the PDP is playing havoc with its destiny, with its success in the 2023 election. And this is very unnecessary because it is seen as the beacon light of hope. And unfortunately, that light is being put out. It has been extinguished. So there is no really opposition as we speak right now. Although the PDP has performed this money in terms of opposition, but it is worse now. It is as if there is no fallback. You are now between the devil and the deep blue sea. And why? Because the crisis is just fundamentally driven by vigorous, capricious, and out of touch control for a party. That's why I say it is principally driven by the drum major instinct. And this is not healthy. It is even faster by resorting to court. Now that the party is here in the flame of litigations, what will happen? It is going to worsen. Because even the so called convention that would have reflected the change of captain will no longer take place. The court the processing, unless there is a resolution and accommodation in their meeting on Saturday, the court processes will hamstring whatever process that is in place, that will all be put in place for the convention in October, November, or December. Meanwhile, you would have just waited. So the present leadership will continue. The leadership has spilled into 2022 and with negative the whole asset just because of the, your megalomaniac attitude of the of, of, of starting character. Who believe that what they say is what must be done? Okay, uh, Mr. Inkutara, uh, moving away from, or moving slightly away from looking at the issues the PDP is currently dealing with, um, of course, there's news that Stella Audo has, uh, you know, also decamped, you know, which adds to their woes, I believe. Uh, but mo uh, moving away from that, let's also talk about the um, um, possibilities and, you know, the space for opposition to actually, actually uh, thrive. Um, do you think that the current Nigerian government has given enough um, space uh, for opposition to thrive? Uh, do you think that it's even possible to have a, 
you know, reasonably successful opposition party with, you know, the current Nigerian government? Or have the PDP just yes, been lazy? Yes, yes, you can. I think uh, the PDP embarked on a long short journey of lethargic sleep and inertia. It really has nothing to do with um, the political environment. I agree. We have a government that is tyrannical in power, a government that is impervious to criticism, a government that will not book any opposition. They see dangerous enemies in the painted shadow and decipher sinister from behind every dissenting wall. So they go after perceived and real enemies. No doubt about that. But that is why you have the opposition. That is why people are clamoring for change of government because of all these indices. So if you resign yourself to faith, then you're no longer the opposition. People will no longer look up to you. Now, as the major opposition party, I agree, unlike the Jonathan administration, where Jonathan was a little bit tolerant, to a very large extent. In fact, if you compare the two, I will tell you Jonathan was 100% tolerant when you compare the two. Where Jonathan was a little bit tolerant. But then, in this present uh, dispensation, they are not tolerant at all to dissenting views. You can agree. But that should not in any way dust the no opposition party or dust Nigeria. If this government, if you have a government that is democratic, then why are you going to have a very viral? Why are we talking about a viral and strong opposition? We won't be talking about a viral and strong opposition. People won't be looking up to the PDP because everybody will just go and express his views without anything happening. But even if the government tries to clamp down, on, of, of, of the opposition. Nigerians will react. And we will, people are expecting the PDP to take the lead, and others will follow. We are not saying it's going to be that we are speaking. That is the same thing we are talking about. I am annoyed today. Many other questions are going to be on air today. Some have been on air. We've always been on air. That is the opposition we are talking about. But a lot of confidence was, was reposed in the PDP, was reposed in that party. And it is so sad to say that the host, uh, uh, Confident people have all been dashed. And that is why people, that is why it is an issue when it comes to the PDP. Because the PDP is one party that has been in power. The PDP is one party that has what it takes, the resources, both the financial model, the financial strength, and the clout in terms, in terms of numerical strength and so on. And the PDP will have the backing of majority of Nigerians given the poor performance of the present administration. That's why people are saying, otherwise we are all campaigning, we are all criticizing the government, but we expect a formidable front like the PDP to do more, and the PDP failed us. But this does not in any way justify the defection of persons from the party to the other. That has really nothing to do with the failure or success of PDP. It has to do with an individual interest. So we must make that distinction. It is based on individual interest, not about the party or the uh, 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 failure or success of PDP. So people should stop giving slandered interpretations into defections. It is strictly individual. If Stella Obia will leave PDP for APC, then who does she expect to strengthen the PDP? Hmm. If the governors will leave the party for an APC, the, the governors we are leaders of the party in that state, which means they have inadvertently indicted themselves that they have also failed. So it really has nothing. It really just has to do with political interest. The ABC is in power. I strongly believe that with the ABC in power, I can achieve my political ambition. A. That is that is the driving force. And some also believe that there are certain persons that have adjusted the PDP. And so their chances in the PDP are quite slim. Therefore, let us move to another party where our chances are going to be high, uh, 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 great. That is exactly what is going on. It really has nothing to do with the failure of success of the party or the leadership. That is a lie. That would be a, a complete dispensation of mendacity. Okay, so Mr. Inkutaria, yes, what, I, what you've said is what we've seen happen in our, we know, within our political space. One politician moving from one political party to another, just wherever they can get their political ambitions realized. So yes, what do you think might... That's all. Sorry? Sorry? Come again, please. At the conclusion of the ambition, Exactly. And for the of the ambition, that's that, what, yeah. Okay, so what do you think might save save us regarding our politics? Would you know the formation of ideology save us? Would even if we have a new political party, a third force like you know Jagger has <laughs> has mentioned, if they do not develop ideologies, yeah, yeah. would they not uh, just yeah. be another APC PDP? My dear, I think. Um, 
you just embarked on delusional excursion to think of ideology in our present political dispensation. Parties are not formed based on ideologies. Even most uh, party loyalists don't even go by the constitution of their parties. Otherwise, you won't be having these features here and there. We won't have them. They don't go by constitution. You see, it is unfortunate. We got it wrong in 1999 when a lot of Nigerians impugned the transition program. And so they stayed away from party politics, from getting involved in politics. And as a result of that, people with distorted perception of life were accidentally discharged onto the political surface. And those characters have groomed others like them. So it has nothing to do with party politics. In the days of the NPN, UPN, and so on, whenever they, they had meetings, party meetings, the meetings were held in party secretariats. And the meetings were presided over by the party chairman. Mr. President, Mr. Governor, walk in as, as any, like any other member. And each time the, uh, the chairman of the party walked in, the president and governor, who they were in that meeting before the, uh, the venue before the president, who stand, who stood for the president, for the chairman. That was when the party reigned supreme. That was when you talked of party ideology. And before budgets were made, they were first of all submitted to the party for scrutiny. Because the image of the party is what is at stake and not the image of the governor. So it was first of all submitted to the party for scrutiny. That is when we had party ideology. Not today, where the governors are even made the leaders of the party and the chief president leaders of the party. That is an aberration. And so, that is the so, Mr. So Inkotaria, so what changed? What, what, what then changed, you know, amongst these political parties? I just told you, I said I made reference to 1999. You cannot be quit what you don't have. It's not possible. You made reference to, I made reference to 1999, where responsible people stayed away, abstained from partisan politics. I remember a former uh, uh, four-time minister who was asked, to go buy for the governorship of River State. And he said, no, I will not. Because I don't want to be involved in all kinds of nonsense. Today he's regretting it. I don't need to mention his name. But because we have this character, people who, their perception of, that's why I say, they suffer from narcissistic personality disorder. That they believe that, oh, these other ones are least servers, we are the least lost. Whatever we say must happen. And what we must dictate to the party. And that is the problem with the PDP and the ABC. We must dictate to the party. And that is as a result of their background. Look, my dear, you being a multi billionaire or you being the president of a country does not mean you're imbued with rectitude, does not mean you're imbued with certain qualities. What matters is your upbringing. That is crucial. And you cannot be quit to a society what you do not have. So right. the basic problem has to do with one's perception of what politics is. Otherwise, you tell me, how do you justify where a man, because he's a governor, a president, a minister, will steal up to 50 billion naira? What are you going to do with 50 billion naira? What you should pray for is for God to give you your basis. If today you want to go to London on holidays, God should make it possible for you to go to London. You should not beg to train your children. You should have a roof over your head. If your car is old, you should be able to change your car. What are you going to do with the hundred billion dollars in your account? Right. Mr. Ingotari. And that is the problem we are having. Mr. Ingotari, I, I want you know to, uh, to throw another, you know, another angle at you. And you know, one of the things that has been mentioned is that certain persons have hijacked the PDP. Uh, do you agree with this? And, you know, who can you point out, if possible, uh, any of these elements that may have hijacked the PDP um, that, you know, and led the to the current drama? What is going on is, 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 a, is a question of uh, 
contesting and contending parties ego battle at all. You I mean that certain persons have hijacked or are trying to hijack is still valuable. I mean you can't contest that. Uh, it's an ego battle. That is what is going on. Um, the River State Governor has been accused, not by one person, not by two persons, not by three, not by four, including Mwazu and Co. He has also admitted that he has been accused of trying to hijack the party. He has also said so uh, 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 on your sister stations and in, in so many fora. He has admitted that he has been accused. He did not admit that he has actually hijacked. He said he has been accused of hijacking the party. Now, the issue of prison to secondus, he is also, he said, that's why I said an ego, but he is also saying, you cannot just disgrace me out of power like that, out of office like that. So these are the issues, and they all have their loyalty, they all have their official, official orders. So it becomes a problem. But where I blame those calling for the removal of secondus, you just have a short period. If you, if you can remember, think back, reflect on what happened to the APC in River State, on what happened to the APC in one of, one of the states in the north and so on, you will be able to manage the problem. Conflict, like I always say, is a function of interaction. And because man cannot not communicate, man is prone to it. But resolution is what matters. And that is where wisdom comes in. You should be able to know when to shift your sword and when to draw your sword. That is where maturity comes in. You have just one or two more months to do. What is the rush? Because you believe that if he's allowed to stay, he might influence those that will come after him. He might influence. But if he is that bad as you claim, then you should not be able to influence those that will come after him in the next convention. If he is that bad and you are that good as you claim, then you should be you should have the cloud because you should have to pull out you based on the bad leadership. You should have to pull out that will go against him. So the whole thing is senseless, completely senseless. Now it is an ego battle, just because, oh, I have said he has to go, he has to go. Okay. You're going to say, no, you don't have the right to tell me I have to go. The okay. to come um, is now shared in the flame of litigation. All right, in the That is the best situation. Um, um, and now, also share your thoughts on the idea of a one-party state. You know, if there is no viable or, you know, strong enough opposition, you know, and that includes whatever third-party, uh, you know, conversations that people might be having. It also includes independent candidates and, and whatnot. Um, are, are there fears of what, you know, a one-party state brings? One-party state is akin to dictatorship. It's akin to tyranny. That's just the truth about one party state. And uh, the present administration's style of leadership obviates the need for any further proof. Where, look at the grazing laws, look at the issue of Boko Haram. We all know that the, the national, the president is complicit. And that is because of the interest of the Mr. President. I'm very sorry to say this on your, on your speech. We all know that it's complicit. What are you going to say about uh, uh, what they call uh, the services that you are removed from office? The NSA confirmed that the embezzled funds, that the money that we released to them, we are not used for the very purpose. Their successors confirmed it. You rewarded mediocrity with ambassadorial appointment because it's a one party state. The National Assembly claimed that that's what we are talking about, one party state, because they have the numerical strength in the National Assembly. So even if you go to the, if you are talking about the PIA, the PIB and the PIA, so we all know the dangers of a one-party state. And that is where a lot of people are angry with the PDP. A lot of people are angry. Not, not because we can, we can speak, but do I have the financial muscle? Do I have the clouds? So we're not just talking a broom. A broomstick can be broken easily, but the bunch is difficult. To make. So a lot of us will hold that confidence. That not necessarily because of the PDP. It's not necessarily because the PDP uh, is populated by saints. No. But you need a force. And that was what the former national chairman, INEC chairman, was talking about, uh, the third force. But the third force you're talking about, unless the third force is being uh, populated, unless parties merge into a different, a new party, it will be very difficult to fight the PDP and the APC successfully. The only party that can do that successfully because of the cloud, because of the financial model, is the PDP. 
I mean, there's no one who would have been interested in what is going on in the PDP. If it's not to bury itself, we can bury it. If the is gone, we have other parties. But because the PDP has the clout and the financial model, hasn't been in office for quite some time. But Mr. Inkojaria, um, that is why yeah. people are talking about the PDP. When we see the level of defections, Sorry? when we see the level of defections between the APC and PDP, I mean, people have now said that they are both the same parties, both sides of the or different sides of the same coin. Don't don't you see that way? <laughs> oh my goodness! Wait. The APC is not populated by people from Spain or from space or from heaven. Majority of APC members were PDP members or uh, 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 CPC members or what have you. So when you say if they are this one and the same, uh, you cannot be far from the truth. You cannot be far from the truth. And that is why I'm saying it, it's going to be a difficult task. Even if we have the PDP in power, it's not as if we are going to experience a remarkable change. It depends on the individual, not the party. And that's why it's more an advice to the Supreme Court judgment that said, to me, it's fine, including that said, you vote for the party and not the individuals in Nigeria. It is reasonable, with due respect to the Lord Justice, it is reasonable. Because you know, even dear you, my sister, my brother, you know too well that your membership of a party is predicated on who you know and who you love in that party, not the ideology of that party in Nigeria. So we are not talking of party, we are talking of leadership. Not just the party, because nobody is going by the party manifesto in this country. Nobody. Nobody. It's an individual thing. I am the governor of Liberty. I am the president of Nigeria. It is what I like that I will do. But the is that how we should but, it, but is that how we should be? You question me at the party. You don't be what are you from the party? How can the party question me? How can the party question me? It is a yes I think. And that's why we have the problem we have. It's a yes sir, yes sir, yes I think. And that that's why I'm asking Mr. Nkutara, is that how we should be? Dictate to you what to do. Sorry? And that, you mentioned that you mentioned that you know people look out for the person, the individual, and his own leadership style or personality. So I'm saying, is that how it should be? What should the focus as, as be? Aside from gastric, aside from gastric prisons, not necessarily leadership style. Gastric prisons, stomach prisons. Hmm. So continue. So I'm saying, is that how yes, it should no, be? No, should no, the no. focus not be on? I mean, I'm talking about like what an ideal situation should look like in Nigeria. Should it be no, about no, a no, focus no, no, on the no, no, person no, no, no. or the, the political party and their ideologies? I just answered your question. I told you, I said, first and foremost, forget about ideology when we talk of political parties in this country. All right. That is number one. Number two, membership of a party has to do with the individual, the one you look up to, the one you believe is going to be your messiah. The one you believe is going to open the doors for you. If that man is in APC, bam, you run to APC. If he's in PDP, bam, you run to PDP. Mr. Ingotara, you, you, you don't if understand today, my question. Labor, if today you move to Labour Party, you run to you move to Labour Party. It's as simple as that. Mr. Like Mr. Like Ingotara, you don't understand my question. I'm saying I, yeah. I, I, we know what it is now. I'm talking about what the ideal should be. Should the ideal be about what you're saying, where people follow the one person who they feel is their messiah? Or should it be about the ideology of the political no. party? The ideal, not what it is at the moment. Ideally, it has to do with your conviction, which has to be in sync with the ideology of the political party. If, for example, you believe that because the political parties have their manifesto, they have their ideology, they have their constitution, now you pick up, you go through, and you believe that what that political party stands for is in tandem with your convictions and your beliefs. That is it. You go for it. Without necessarily joining the party because of an individual or a group of individuals. That's why in civilized climes, you can be my brother, you can be my sister. We are best of friends. You know, you can be siblings without being best of friends. We are best of friends. But you belong to a different political party, and I belong to a different political party. And it's not affecting our relationship. That is just a direction of country. But that is not the case here. That's oh. why I said an aberration. It's not the case here. 
Yeah, in fact, if you, as an APC member, if you are seen discussing with the PDP members, oh, you're a mole. It is that bad. Oh, but if I don't discuss with the PDP member, how do I move him over to APC? Intellectual anemia. You see, that's the problem we have. And that is why we are where we are today, because we are not driven by ideology. We are driven by loyalty and not loyalty to our government or loyalty to our constitution, but loyalty to the individual. And that is where we have the problem. So while our, what I'm saying in essence, in synopsis, is that what we have now is an aberration. It's an anomaly. It is not what is obtained in any civilized life. All right. Mr. Opunabo Inkotaria, thank you very much. Uh, for your time and for the conversation we, we've just had. Thank you. We wish you a great Friday and a beautiful weekend ahead. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. Stay with us. Uh, we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we're talking about the NNPC finally declaring profit after 44 years. We'll be joined by an oil and gas consultant after the short break. Stay with us. Good morning once again. <laughs>